Hi, my name's Chris Blythe, and I'm building a Fairlight CMI out of parts. Follow me along my journey as I make a lot of mistakes along the way. The journey is the destination, as they say. Cheers. Ah. <laughs> Oops, jeez, Blythe. Aha! All right, I'm super giddy. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode. It's a very late night from here, so bear with me. All right, in the last episode, it was amazing. We got audio, musical audio, to come out of the machine. Now, it was only on a couple of channels, and it was, you know, the machine was kind of lying in bits. Now, so I have to put it back together. Why? Well, it's getting warm, and I need to be kept cool. It needs to be put into its proper configuration to draw air through and keep all the cards cool. Now, I'm realizing that the cards and the channels, it's got to be all cleaned out because these cards are very, very difficult to get in and out, and I've got to figure out why that is. Um, I've also, uh, one of the things that's slowing me down is using an RS-232 keyboard to type into it through my PC. That's not good. I've got to get a proper, proper communication with it. So I've got to get the MFX keyboard working. And then I've got to really have a look at the 331 output cards because they are looking a little worse for wear, and I've got to have some TLC. So, um, that's a lot of work. That's before we can say, think about the VGA card, uh, think about the mouse, think about the rack mount ears, think about the uh, the front facing, you know, um, the, the front face that it's got to have on it. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. So, buckle in, let's get to work. Boom, look what arrived. My little MFX connector goes right there. However, the only thing is, it's got uh, soldered pins and not IDC. So I'm gonna to have to figure out the pinouts properly but I guess I need to um, figure out how to connect that. I actually ordered it like three, two times on Amazon, one time on eBay. The two times on Amazon emailed me back and said, no, we can't actually get this. The one time on eBay did the same, and then the third one from the Netherlands arrived just today. But the only thing is, it is not IDC. It's got the solder pin, so I'm gonna look at getting, and this is for the MFX, so I've got this cable here, which you basically just fold, but Man, it feels kind of cakey or something. It feels old. Um, I might just use this ribbon cable, which is new, and a new connector, bump bump, a new IDC connector, pop that on there, and then I think it's every alternate pin. Like one, two, three, oh, it's not, they're in parallel. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. Peter sent me a picture of the 354 card, and in the background there was the back of this, which was IDC. And, um, and it just looked, you know, flat. So it looks like it might be that alternate pin thing. I need to get the schematics for the 354 card. All right, um, however, until then, let's get this cable uh, IDC connector assembled. Ta-da! Okay, so for the connector, I know that it's basically, I don't know the order of the connections, but I just folded it over and went about that length there, which looks about right. Now all I need to do is split these off and, and um, separate them for, for soldering. Then at that point then, I'll figure out which way around this goes to make it so that, that that is correct. And it'll just be basically either that way around or that way around. So whichever pin one goes to. I think that's pin one, and I guess it looks, my brain would tell me it'd be that way around. That's what my brain would tell me, but my brain is really bad. So, you know, all right. Okay, I've got these stripped, and now I just need to interleave them for like the up, down, up, down. But before I do any of that, I have to actually figure out which pin goes to what. So what I'll probably do before I do any of that is just tip these with a bit of solder to make it easier. All right, there's one half all facing down, the other half facing that way. Let's go and figure out the pinouts. Okay, so this little triangle here marks this is being pin one, okay? Uh, and this being pin one comes along, joink, this blue one is pin one. And these are all the ones that are the, I guess the, the odd numbers.
All right, Sunday morning. Um, <laughs> again, I should really be a bit more awake before I do this, but I'm impulsive. So um, this one, I realized only now that this is a 26 pin connector, but this is a 24 pin connector. So Peter says that pin one goes to pin one. So I'm just gonna keep on going till there's no more pins. I, I think I have to look at some of the pictures to see if any of this give away that the last two, the last two on each end are cut off. There's a way to figure this out. I stopped, had a coffee, thought about it, and now I have an answer. And it's sitting upstairs. I will use Steve CMI. I've got, it's got the 354 card and it's got the cable. Okay, here we are at the back of Steve Rance's CMI. So I'm gonna be taking this panel off here so I can have a little look at the 354 card so I can see um, what the difference between the 24 pin and the 26 pin connector. Okay, we have the answer. If you look at the bottom of this here, bleh, I can turn it around. You can see that the there are two uh, of the two of the ribbon cable connections disconnected from the end. So that's pins 13 and 26. Ta da! The proof is here. Thank you, Steve Fairlight. All right. That means I can solder. Good. Let's get on with it. I got this multimeter when I was 17. 16. 17. Wow. Okay. That's the top row done. Now I guess I just put the uh, bottom row on and then I'll do the heat gun. All right. And now to solder. You might ask why I'm not using tweezers to hold it down. Well, my plastic tweezers have broken. And um, I always, I never like that when I do this, it heats up and it squishes the cable and it bothers me. So I find it better just to hold it with my finger. There you go, not so bad. So, uh, this little plate comes off. Why? Because we are going to replace it. Uh, which way? That one's going to go that way. So that can go this way. Perfect. So let's do it this way. Look at that. Let's do one of these. Like that. All right. And now it goes in. There. Done. Now all this thing needs is power. All of this is for naught without power. So now that I have these all soldered, these pins, and I've got more pins than I need, I'm not gonna use all of these pins, but now that I have them all here, I will be able to pop them in their little respective sockets and then figure out which ones we're gonna use. Peter gave me a diagram and the pinouts of what voltages go where. Great. This nice with a with a power can. I don't have a nine pin Molex. I've just used these two, and then I've got the the same of the other side ready as well, so that I can unplug this thing if I need to. So 
So now I've got these little guys, and I've got these wires, and I, these now need to meet these wires and be attached. That is that is a that is a god awful mess. That's what that is. That, uh, that's it. And that's an embarrassment to soldering. Wow! I'll be thrown out of the soldering union for this. All right. Look at that. Lovely. Now I just need to figure out where I can get the voltages for these ends. All right, guys. Welcome back to the madness. Here we are. So today, what we're going to be doing is I'm one step away from getting the MFX connection going in and getting this 354 card powered so that I can properly type on the darn thing. All right, so, but um, I'm seeing that this power that comes in from the digital cage comes up and it just seems to go to these LED panels at the front here. I don't know where it goes. I need to look a bit closer, which I should do and set a video of this. I should actually find out, but anyhow. Uh, but I see that there's a, there's a power supply that comes up here. I can tap into this little terminal block here and then from there it can go on its merry way to wherever it was going. I'll take the I'll take another tap off of there and power the 354 card. Peter Buck tells me that this card, if it just gets five volts, it should be fine because it's just driving 7400 logic, so it should be should be okay. All right, let's do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip off these things. I'm going to cut it about here, and then I'm going to route it here. Then I'm going to unclip all of these little things and then make it go that way. Boom. Let's do it. disconnect this stuff and bring it around there and then reattach those ones to make it still nice. <laughs> then it comes up. Look at this! Look at that! That's ridiculous! Wow. It's almost like I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay. Boom! Look at that! Then this connects to... I'm going to check the voltages of course first. And then let's get some zip ties in here. Call that done! Why do I keep on taking off my glasses when I need them on? And then when I feel like I need to get a closer look, I take them off, which is exactly when I need them. There we go. Boom! Lovely. You see it? Look at this. Everything's tickety boo, red to red to. Oh, wonderful! Alright, so, power supply, now I can plug this back in here. Bonk. And um, this now comes in, goes through this, comes to here, then goes down over here. Boom! Okay, everything seems pretty well tied down. Things loose, it's all put down there so it's not going to fall. 354 card is installed. Let me just do one last little check on the screws here. Once again, I've taken off my glasses. 
glasses so I can't actually see what I'm doing. All right. Holy moly. This is actually the moment that I, I plug in the MFX. MFX cable. Here we come. I guess this is it. You find some something to make this a bit more sturdy. Screws, perhaps. All right, let's try. Actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to take a little detour. The keyboard can wait. Why? I need to establish to get more cards working first, because the thing, the stage after this, is I need to take the all the cards completely out again. I want to establish a datum of at least known cards that work before I take it all apart again. I think I could have too many variables later on. So let's establish, let's get the cards working and let's establish that we've got a certain amount of cards going at least, just knowing that they're going. They might not sound good, but let's just get them working and figure out what we do and don't have. And so we can just eliminate some stuff later on down the road. All right, all right, good. I'm glad you agree. Okay, I've got three output cards that need some attention. Um, this one has just got some, what looks like mashed up uh, smoothing capacitors, but they're in line with these resistors, so it's, eh, we'll have to look into that a little bit, look on the circuit uh, on the circuit diagram, see what they're connected to. Those six, um, they're one nanofarad um, capacitors, they're just smoothing capacitors for um, this. I'm thinking that I could just probably cut them this one here, uh, just got the one little capacitor busted in the corner. This one is kind of murkiest of all of them. It seems to have the most dirt and grime. I've been really careful when they've been cleaning these to just be super, uh, not too much going in too heavy. I've got to nail this down somewhere. I think it just got, sits on top of that. And this one's got missing uh, a missing pot, which I found in the box. So I just need to reattach that. I've got it somewhere. So this uh, busted resistor right there, is for this um, LF347 op amp. So um, that's him right there, R65. To make him work. All right. Aha! Aha! So right now the primary goal is just to clean them up. If there's anything obvious, just tidy that up. Any components that are broken and stuff, let's just make sure that physically they're kind of okay. See if they work. The calibration and all the other stuff, that can come later. Okay, I have got um, one, two, three, four, five output cards. I don't have enough XLR cables, which is annoying. I'm gonna have to make something. I've got one, two, one, two three, four, five um, channel cards. All, right. All the cards are lighting up at least. Let's go uh, voice load and let's do a system configuration. Let's have a little look, see if everything's loaded in. NP246810. Uh, Let's just go 10. NP10. Bonk. 10. All right. One, two, one, two, one, two. Done. One, two. Nothing on that one because there's nothing plugged in. Nothing on that one. A noise on that one. A noise on that one. So that card's working, it's just quiet. Then a very loud one. Then nothing. Then that one. Then that one. Du, 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 du. This is fantastic. So, all right, I need to make more XLRs. Let's do that. When I'm playing it, you can see that there's, there's activity in those memory on those. You can see it's right there. All right, we are getting there. Okie dokie, that's good. We've got progress there. That's enough sound and that's enough stuff coming out. Yeah, they're not perfect. This allows me to now go into the next process of labeling everything, getting all out the cards out, stripping it down, and putting the track guides back in, cleaning those up, and making sure we can get to the next stage. All right. Wow. This is the top one. Oh. 
All right, this is an interesting part. When the cage, uh, when I had to dismantle it, all of this stuff, when you when you rotate this, they all kind of fall apart like a, like a deck of cards, as it were. <laughs> um, it wasn't panicking me at all when that happened. Anyhow, um, now what I'm gonna do is I've gotta figure out the spacings of all of these and then figure out how much from the edge there is a gap and then um, turn the whole thing upside down whilst keeping pressure on it and, and making it so that it doesn't um, fall apart. What I also need to do is, this is the top one, I'm kind of testing this. I've got the bottom one over there and then I literally probably have to, literally probably have to, I probably have to take out all the cards and lay everything back in. And hopefully, because these cards have been extra, the edge connectors had some pressure on them, they're not as tight as before. That's my, that's my hope. I was, I'm, I'm going on the reckoning that this was in a place where it didn't have cards in for a long time, and the coppers slowly expanded. You put that over a longer area with, the, you know, the length of the of the edge connector here, and um, that's a lot of pressure adding up. So that's my belief. So by having this, these cards in here and then taking them out, refitting it, putting them back in quickly, hopefully the copper won't have chance to, to kind of clamp back in. And if it does happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bottom ones in, put the cards in, test it, then if everything's fine, then I'll just lay this on top. Clickety click, 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 fine. Because of course, I'll never need to take it apart again. All right, um, this does make me think I should do though is I should remove these cards. No, I should add in the other three cards so that it's got a full component, you know, a full uh, quota of cards because I'll need all the channel cards to be, um, you know, operational as well. I don't want to have them so they shove in and never come out again. All right. It's at this stage that I realize something's up. Things are out of alignment. If things aren't lining up, something's off. Can you do this from the underside? Would you do this from the underside? Would this be something that you'd want to do? It looks like that is right. It actually looks right. I think that needs to be sawn off a bit. At this point, I realized I may as well find out as many of the cards to get working as possible. So I quickly added some more cards just to make sure that they're actually working and functioning before I labeled everything and took everything out. When I start tapping the keys, it'll go one, two, 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 one, two. Boom. If I go, I hold down a whole bunch, it'll go bink, bink, bink. Bank, but holding 16 at once, it'll go. I should do that too much because the table starts to wobble. Now, what we don't have is 16 output cards. Damn, I don't even have six XLR cables. All right, the next step is to take all these out, lay the ground tra 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 trail, what's it called? Tracks in the guides, probably put the bottom tracks in, put the cards in, test it, put the top cards in, test it, uh, top trip tracks in, test it, put everything back together. All right, let's do it tomorrow. So as an added last step, before I take everything apart, I added the channel cards in, the output cards, and then I brought down a little mixer and plugged everything in, as many as I could, and kind of just went through them in chunks, just kind of systematically to know that they're actually outputting something. Again, I'm not expecting to output anything perfectly, I just want to know that there's enough life in there before I really take everything apart. Now, let's load in a voice. So, it's loaded, right? All right, I'm gonna go MP16, boom. And let's follow by a little SC to see how we're doing there. 16. That one's very loud. So, 
on that one there, number two, we know that that one isn't working. I've got nothing on that one at all. Who knows what that is? I'm sounding really bad. later I did the same thing as this last time I just took the edge off here and the edge off there so it's got like basically a couple of millimeters of play on the inside so that when the cards are aligned they have just a bit of play this in and get it right and then screw it together then try and see the cards right. But guess what? It's going to be fine. Alright, I need to loosen off that screw, don't I? In typical Blythe fashion, I just went forward. I didn't think, I didn't reach out to anyone at this point. I didn't think, wow, there might be a better way of doing this. Huh. So, oh, they're moving. What are you doing moving? I can see you moving. Stop moving. Oh, balls. Okay. This has to come back out. Wait. Why do, what are you guys doing? Who do you think you are? You're upsetting the plan. Plan. Oh, I've got an idea. How about just some tape to hold it down? Life. Look at that, rigid, strong as an ox. Why didn't I think of that before? Look at that, and walk around. It's a party. All right, does that make sense? But at least I built something so I can put this damn thing in. All right, here we go. <laughs> Oh man, all right. Okay, so these all look pretty much aligned. They all go together, but these ones don't. Now, I've managed to do something I didn't think was possible. I could bend them up and ping it out and then put it back in. So I've moved this one along. This one was actually over there. I realized that I should have had three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and I made a mistake. So it still looks off a little bit. So if I put a card in there, what does it do? Does it go in? No, it looks off. It's off at the bottom, just by a bit. So I need to see what that is. Huh, interesting. So it looks like these are designed to go in and out. But they, they interesting, even when they're lined up, maybe this is the source of why these cards are so tight. 
that when I line it up there, it's still off a little bit at the bottom. I am this is what I faced before. Cards are super tough to get in. one here and line it up at the top it's off at the bottom but there's not enough play at the bottom of there to let it move around okay I've got this thing in but I see why the cards are tight now so I know I need to take it back out again I have to damn so close it's enough that it's gonna cause the same problems later on so I have to fix it all right Let's take this out. Okay, this is the one I didn't clearly give enough sanding down to because it was it was all the way across there. So I just need to do more. All right, let's do it. We have space, much more space. It's time to retape the beast. So, there we go. That's better. Yeah, there you go. That's more in line. That's more like it. Yeah, it really is. That's much better. Okay. Taking the tape off. Ta da! Alright! It's really lining up nicely now. It's still very, very tough to push the cards in. It's freaking me out. This might still be a problem, but at least the cards really look like they're lining up now. Oh, that's so much better. We could put all the cards back in. And then lay the next cake, the thing on top. <laughs> so I don't really have to actually deal with it. Dude, let's get these cards back in there. Oh, Jesus. Now you've done it. Hmm. Oh, fudge. No, no, it's still moving. My brain telling me things. Oops. How would one even build it upside down? Yep, let's do it. How are you going to do it? Well, it's fine. You'll do it. That's why. All right, more more filing because this is right at the very edge. I've got them nice and got a little bit of a gap at the end there. It's only not much. Just a. Enough to just have a bit of play. So, now what we've got to do is figure out the, the offset from the edge here of this geezer so that if I put a card in there, it'll line up. Yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna fill that up, tape it up, turn it upside down, do the whole thing. Okay, now let's get the screws ready for the uh, install H1. Great, okay. Oops, jeez, life. Retreat. I think we need to take that card out. Jesus Christ, Blythe. What monster have you created? Oh, wow, it's tough. It is going to be difficult to get these boards in or out. That's for sure. Good Lord. That was a lot of stress. Oh, this does not bode well. All right. That's reasonably in. I guess the next question is getting 
cards in or not. <sighs> okay. This is still out of alignment. Now, it's pretty simple, but I'm just way too close to the trees to see the woods here. And I'm probably tired. That's correct. There. Oh, I'm just off here. That's what that is. These are all lining up great. It's just that one is actually wrong. That's what that is. And the top one is wrong too. Of course. Does that make sense? This part's a bit scary because it feels really like a one-way road. That if I uh, put this together now, there will be no taking this apart. <laughs> That's what it really feels like. So what I need to do is, I guess, test it and put a board there and then try and take it out. Let's do that. We're putting the cards back in. All right, let's see. Card goes in. Does card come out? <laughs> card does not want to come out. And this is great because I've got like an open chassis. I can really get on it. This is very, uh... so when I'm pulling this board out, it is pulling the entire chassis along with it. It's I mean, it's sliding really easily in the rails. The rails are not causing a problem at all. Clearly, it's not the rails. It's the, it's the, 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 con the edge connectors. Look at that. Hmm. All right, this is obviously a problem. Okay, I honestly don't want to do. Once these boards go in, they are in. Like Flynn. Well, I'm still in a bit of a quandary, but I guess this, I mean... Uh, I was thinking of putting in a memory card, like something I know I'm going to need to do, and I was just going to do it to line things up. Make sure that it's all hunky-dory and do a few of those. So if I now put in 12 and I just pop the card in, my real problem is going to be if I can get it out. Well, it went in very easy. Oh, yep, okay, just. Wow, 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 maybe this is just the way it's going to be. Holy crap. So if I put this one back in, they're going in easy peasy. All of this is, all of this is great. All right, that gives me hope. Shit. It feels like it's coming. Oh my God, the amount of pressure I'm putting on these plastic tabs is insane. Holy shit. This isn't pleasant <laughs> at all. Not enjoying this. Oh wow, 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 wow. I would hate to try and pull one of these guys out now. Mm. Oh, why does this not make me feel good? This should be a triumphant moment, but it is not. Okay, all these cards are labeled, so I'm just putting them back in. But what I should have done, what I think I said I was going to do, was just put the CMI cards back in and then slowly build it back up and not get too far ahead of myself. Sound familiar? It literally looks like a thinner board too. I honestly think there's just two different specs of boards. Like that looks thick. That looks thin. Now it's fell in. Just fell inside. Alrighty. Oh shit, let's get the CMI cards.
went in really easy. They're all going in super easy. Just definitely a good thing. <clears throat> wow, I can't get this one in there. Spoke too soon. Okay, this part's important. The little blue pins are these registration tabs that I thought originally were actually impeding me getting the cards going in, but what they were doing was doing their job. They were registering the card so they would go in straight and not maybe move or leave the card in too high or too a lower position that could potentially short. So I removed said blue tabs. This was a mistake. Oof, okay, this one is tough. And that board does look thicker. Jesus. <clears throat> that looks wrong. 16. 16 looks wrong. 16 looks like the contacts are, are, are misaligned. Will 16 want to come out? Wow, look at that. Boom, just popped out. Now, does 16 have uh, guards? No, it doesn't. Shit. So, we have to just make sure that it goes in a bit lower. Wow, the leeway is a lot. Oh, I really should have had those guards in there. Fudge. I guess is a reason for the damn cards. Okay. All we can do is connect everything back up now. Oof, 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 here we go. Wah, 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 wah. As you can kind of tell, I don't know what's going to happen here. I should have put those guides in. That might kick me in the butt. That might be taking out all the cards again. We're in a situation where the cards are difficult to take out already. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, we're rolling. Let's see what happens. Um, it wasn't powering on, it was crowbarring, it was doing crowbar, it was protecting itself and um, I taken out the little blue, you know, register things. Remember I said that was not good? Anyway, I took out the three map, I took as much as I could out, took out the three memory boards and power. So, it was these three memory boards not being registered in properly, being offset that told it to crowbar. Boom! All right. So I said I'm glad I'm gonna be getting a chance to put in those little blue things to actually keep the cards in place. And now we get that chance. Great. Hold on. No, you really need to go in. I'll be needing you to go in, please, sir.
and let's put these memory cards back in. I'm inserting the RAM cards and any of the other cards and switching it on in between to check to see if it's still switching on. It's fine. Okay. Until our demands are met. So my camera conked out at that point, and that's fine. And the good thing is, it booted up fine, and we were basically exactly back in the right place. All the cards went back in properly. Adding those blue little registration tabs made the cards go in nicely. I got into a good rhythm, and I also figured out that if I ever really need to take the cards out, I can always take off the top lid, and take out the top uh, tray by taping it up first, and then just angle it out at the bottom. So I'm feeling good about this. The machine's working. Let's move forward back to the MFX keyboard. Okay, so I might be wrong. I might not have all of these things connected correctly. All right, let's just see. This might work. I think we might have to plug that into this one here. Let's just try. Everything I think is plugged into the right place. Let's power it on. I'm also using the new disk image that I made from Steve CMI SD card. Um, all right. All right, this is where you find out if the CMI card is working. It could be that I have to move the connection over to this card. Let's see. I've got this connected into this. Maybe magic will happen. <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> all right. I'm going to power it down. I don't want to do anything with it on. Ah, so close. Okay, let's try again. Yes! <laughs> yes, CMI! Boom! Bam! That's how you do it. <laughs> so the 354 card is now working. And it is booting. And it's saying it's even loading the key. It's loading from non-valtel map. It's loading a different version of the keyboard uh, thingamajig. Ooh, what does this mean? That's super interesting. It just downloaded to 12.3, which is the old MFX system that was for this. So this this boot drive had the as uh, uh, MFX software on it, and it's just downgraded the. Oh no, incompatible CMI software versions. Bam, all right. All right, we'll, we'll fix that, we'll get to that. Because this is too new, or is it? But it's saying MFX, okay, but hang on. I can still go um, SC. So the keyboard's working, yes. Wow, 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 all right, fine. It's giving me this little sign here. Have a little look. So this incompatible CMI, so that means we need to just download. So what we could probably do is do a quit and then do a MFX load. Let's see what happens if we do that. All right, I'm super giddy. <laughs> Can you tell? So um, it's working straight away with the keyboard and I've also noticed that the shift keys work and the function keys work. The only key I don't seem to have is the escape key. So I've got to figure out what the escape key is. But, um, Function keys work, and, and the so I can get to the different screens easy now. What? That is amazing. What's super interesting is I I want to see if MDR will load. What? So I need to downgrade the keyboard. Let's let's try this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go quit. Boom. Do you want to quit? Yes. <laughs> All right. So it's quitting. Right, and now it's exited, and now I go um. MFX load. It's it's loading the software now. Now it's downloading it. Ooh, ooh, I need you to see. Quick. Quick, 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 quick. I wish I had a quick release plate, but I don't. So it's so it's downloading the new software from the Fairlight. From this machine, it's doing magic from there with the gubbins into here, down the cable. <laughs> oh man, this is nuts. I know it's, it should be not exciting, but this is exciting. So here we go. Now, it, I didn't do this before. 
Um, so now I know it's loading, it might load the right version. Or an older version. Let's see. Saving into new Volta RAM. Stand by. Non Volta is empty. Plus blue to enter upload. Oh. Huh? Waiting for software. M F X load. Oh, I think my battery on this thing is dead. Because it's downloading it now. That's weird. We'll see. If this doesn't load, then this is going to be off to the forum I go. Um, because I think this seems familiar. It wouldn't keep. And I think it's the battery inside this needs to be changed. Similar to the one that you get on the actual board. So you need to change out the, 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 the battery. Which is kind of maybe a chip battery type thing. Let's see what happens now. Non-volatile. Damn. No, it's not remembering. Okay, fair enough. So, I'm now able to go up and down and left and right. No problem at all. I can also um, go, so if I go to, I can type on any of the screens now and then use the function keys across the top. So if I want to look at my main layout, no problem at all. My MIDI map, no problem. Control map, everything. No problem at all. Boom, look at that. Oh, I want to test something. If I go FX and it takes me to the FX page like that, which is working, FX, how do I do the number two? Two? Two works, great, bam. Does this work? Yes, <laughs> yes, that little bugger, Steve Rance showed me this handy thing that I wish I'd known six years ago, but hey, that's all good. So back to DIR, boom. And then um, if I'm wanting to look across at anything that's on. So where's my escape key? Damn, don't have escape. What would it be? There's nothing on, there's that. Oh, that's interesting. These did work before. Huh, maybe they don't need to be on the front page. So if I go to um, SC. Steve Rance. Speak of the devil! Steve Rance is texting me right now. Look at that! What are the odds? Right, let's see. This worked before. Ah, I shouldn't have done that keyboard update. The non-volatile memory thing. Crap, that worked before. That works. Oops, unknown command. Back, back. Ha! Huh. Right, now, here's a funny thing. MDR. Oops, can't clear it. Oh, did it crash? I think it did. I think it crashed. But it came up with something. That's weird, isn't it? Let's see. That's weird. This went right back to normal. So, RS. Oh, that's interesting. Process aborted. Oh, because I don't have any of the cards plugged in. Dude, idiot. All right, no problem. All right, guys, that's all for this week. As it happens at this particular moment, it's loading the wrong version. It's incompatible into that console, and it doesn't work. I have to find a way of downloading an old version. And that's for next week. We'll see you next time. Cheers. The first thing that it would do is replace the SCSI drive. Something is definitely up, because it's saying that all the waveform is used. What could be happening? An auspicious moment? Who knows?